might be some consequences of inadequate business planning. Are you wondering if you can just get to business without taking all the time to plan out everything beforehand? By the end of this video, you're going to discover why that's a bad idea. First, we're going to understand the financial risks of not doing adequate business planning. Then we'll go over how business planning is not unlike laying a foundation for a home. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how saving time now can cost you so much more time in the future. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you're watching this video, you may be a person who's naturally like me, where you think, oh, do I need to plan out everything or can I just go and get started? Maybe you don't like doing all the paperwork. When you think about writing out a business plan, you're like, whoa, that sounds boring. I wanna make calls, I wanna design stuff. I just wanna pay money and get things moving. Well, I get it. But here's the challenge to that approach. Building a business without a plan is much like getting your family together gathering supplies and snacks and things, putting them all in a vehicle and saying, we're gonna go to a beach when you've never been to a beach before and you do not have a map. Now, here's the deal. You can get in that car and drive around and you might have a good time. You may run into a beach. You may run into a forest reserve. I don't know, it could turn out great. But if you're like most families, folks are gonna start fighting. They're gonna ask, are we there yet? They're trying to figure out what's going on and you don't have a plan. So my suggestion to you would be to sit back for just a moment and understand that having a plan in place when you're building a business is just going to ensure that you're more likely to hit your goals. If you're not planning within your business, there is no doubt you're going to have poor financial management. So for instance, I'll give you an example. In my business, we do sales forecasting and we track what's coming in every month. So we have cash flow statements, we do our P&L, profit and loss statements, all these different things. Now, if you're a newer business owner and maybe you have a small business or maybe you're a solopreneur, when I mention these things, you might be thinking, Ugh, it sounds so hard. You don't have to do all the things. But if you wanna make it really simple, sales projections just mean that you're looking at how much money you expect you're gonna bring in every month. You're basing your expenses off of that number. And usually you wanna cut yourself some slack so that you're spending considerably under that so that if you underperform, you're still okay. That's something that I actually learned in corporate America. When I used to be a revenue manager and a sales manager, we would have to do these projections looking at how much business we're expecting. And it allowed us to make strategic decisions. And so you wanna make sure that you're planning not just putting in information when money comes in, but so that you're kind of knowing what you're expecting. And that even gives you numbers to aim for from a sales perspective. The other thing is, is that if you're not projecting, if you're not tracking and planning, you're really not going to understand how much money is coming through the door. You're not going to understand how you need to be budgeting it. And it's going to result in a big old yucky mess, especially if you've taken out loans for your business. The next reason you wanna plan in your business is so that you do not have operational inefficiencies. Here's the thing, we all have strengths and weaknesses in business. And most people I know that are business owners, we have strengths and weaknesses outside of the business itself in terms of what it delivers, but in terms of a function within the business. So for instance, I am a systems person. I'm really good at creating systems and helping to weed out inefficiencies. As I talk to other small business owners, one of the things that I notice is oftentimes, we tend to run our businesses from an egocentric standpoint. This is the way I wanna do things. I like this or I don't like this, so the whole company will or won't do this thing. And what happens is, is if we run our business on a whim without creating some type of mapping to see the flow of information, the flow of work schedules, how we deliver things to employees, you're going to be inefficient from an operation standpoint. Now, for some of you, inefficiency may not sound that bad. You're like, okay, so maybe we could have gotten things done a little bit faster. But here's what we have to understand, and this goes back to that first point of poor financial management. Inefficiency means wasted resources. So if you can afford to just waste money, then inefficiencies aren't a problem for you. But if you care about actually making money and keeping money within the business so that you can pay it to yourself eventually, or even your team, we wanna make sure that we cut down on those things and that we do some planning. One of the things that I like to do are operational charts. So I like to see that when someone calls or emails or something and they're interested in doing business, what is the flow of things that need to happen? So I create these charts where it's a basically a decision tree. Um, are they ready to buy now? Yes or no? If yes, then this happens. If no, then this happens. Based on this next question, does this happen or does this happen? Do they speak to this person? So creating those types of decision trees can help you when it comes to planning 
for your business structure. I'll never forget the first time that I created a business plan for my business. It was probably almost 20 years ago. And I remember I was like, oh, this is such a task, could do all of this. But I had been told by mentors and elders that I really needed to create a business plan. Let me tell you, it was one of the best things I ever did because by creating the business plan and using a template, it forced me to look at my competitors. It forced me to create a SWOT analysis for my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And what happened was it gave me a better understanding of my business's abilities. It allowed me to see what I could capitalize on that maybe some of my competitors did not. It also allowed me to see their strengths so I could decide if I wanted to compete with them head on or if I wanted to take a different route and try something slightly different. Now we're gonna pause right here for just a moment and I'm gonna ask you a question. Have you already subscribed to this channel? If you haven't, Take a moment and subscribe. Now, if we create a business without planning and we plan to have employees or team members, that's only going to create confusion. When we have a business plan in place or when we have our direction charted out, it gives our team members the knowledge they need so that they can make sure that they're in alignment. When we do not have that plan, typically it lives in the mind of the business owner, the CEO. And what happens is as they change their mind, as the winds shift, they shift as well. And it creates a state of uncertainty and unbalance for team members. That, I guarantee, will create greater employee turnover. Over time, not having a plan is going to decrease stakeholder confidence. And stakeholders are customers, our clients, our team members, our investors, because people feel confident when someone else has a plan. Think about it, when you vote for politicians or when you follow any kind of leader in your life, you wanna feel that they're confident and they have a plan. No one wants to follow someone that has no compass. And the last piece, ultimately, the reason why it's important to have a business plan, because if you don't, nine times out of 10, you will fail. We know that most businesses actually fail anyways, and I'm not trying to discourage you because obviously many businesses don't fail, right? But the majority of them do fail. Imagine how much more likely you are to fail if you do not have a clear and compelling roadmap to get you where you're trying to go. Speaking of a roadmap, you're going to notice in the description of this video, there's a link to download my Future Ready Playbook. This playbook is chock full of activities and worksheets that will help you be more strategic in planning your future. If you haven't already done it, go ahead and click and download it today.